DIY Spy Dar. This is the Ugly Duckling Challenge hosted by my friend Corey from Desert DIY. Check out the playlist in my description to see the rest of the awesome artists that have participated. This piece may be little, but she is going to be mighty. I have been wanting to do this piece for the last five years. We have finally sold my mother and father-in-law's house, and this was a piece of my father-in-law's that he had made when he was in high school in shop class. So it's pretty old and in great need of some help. And I saved it from the dumpster. The top's pretty beat up, and it actually is a bit wobbly because there is no back on it. Um, you can see when I grab a hold of it that it rocks pretty steady back and forth. But I know that a back will help this out a great deal. The rest of it is pretty solid. I needed to get this whole piece sanded down. So I did get the orbital out and some 80 grit sandpaper. And it really seemed to be taking it off quite easily, which I was happy about. Um, I'm not sure how far um, I'll have to go down to take all these gouges out, but since it's all wood, uh, that helps a lot. I don't have to worry about any type of veneer, and I believe that this wood is pine. Now the back, since I don't know how to use the router that I inherited from my father-in-law, I had to put a little thin strip of wood on the back to accommodate the back panel um, because it was not quite lined up. And he did really well when he was in shop class, but he didn't want to tackle that part. So um, I went ahead and I just glued that little strip on there and when I put the back on, my nails will go through that and you will not see it anyway. I had holes here and there and they had stuff leached out of them, but I used the sawdust and some glue to try to repair them the best I could. Now the back panel, I just had to use some plywood, so I had to skim coat it. It was pretty bad and sand it down smooth. The drawer had a problem. It was missing a lot of the rail, so I needed to build it up first with some Bondo so I could lay a strip of wood across the top. I did get it all taped off and I am protecting the bottom because I want to have as much wood showing on this as possible. And since this wood is so old, I'm going to go ahead and prime it first with some boss. I was a little bit worried that the glue would suck out of the decoupage paper that I am going to put on here and go into that old wood and then the paper would fall off. So I just went ahead and hit it with one coat of boss. Here is this beautiful, lovely paper from Lel and Marty from Made by Marley Magic Paper. And this is the design Chinoise, Chinoise, I don't know how to say that word. But you can see I'm going to have some spaces on the top and bottom. Um, I'm going to have to fill in with some paint to get to the edges. My Mod Podge in matte. I'm going to go ahead and get this piece covered as smoothly as I can in a pretty good layer. 
and this Mod Podge that I have, I'm getting to the bottom of the bucket on it. So it's starting to get a few chunks in there. Um, if you see any chunks, make sure you get them out because they will show up underneath your paper. Laying that paper, start out straight, of course, and you get about one chance to lift it if you're going wrong, and that's about it. And start and slowly put it down, and if you have any um, creases in it, like you can see right there, I have one above that butterfly, get that crease out of there before you start tapping that paper down. It's easier if you let it fall on its own. Now you can see I have another buckle right there by that butterfly. So I'm going to lift it back up real quick, as quick as I could, and try to take that back down and smooth it. And this time around, it did go a lot better, and I got that out of there. And I paid special attention to the edges because I don't want those to lift in any way. Now I have the second side done. They're both looking pretty good. Now I need to do the back um, panel and I need to rip my edges. And since I am such a perfectionist, um, I like to take and just crease my paper at least three times before I start ripping it so I get a really nice line. And the reason you want it ripped is your paint will soak up a lot better and more even if you have a ripped edge. The back panel, start on one end as straight as you possibly can with the way the paper's going to lay. And this time I did use a soft cloth and I just slowly went down. And you see that crease in that red flower? Got to get that out of there. Got to pop that crease out because if, if you, there you go. Because if you try to lay it down with that crease in, you're going to get a crease in your paper. Drop it and finish smoothing it down. To take that paper off, I just have a little sandpaper device with 120 grit sandpaper in it and just go 45 degrees away from the paper and it'll just tear off and rip off really easy. Now I need to paint in that top area and the bottom area with my paint. I have my painter's brushes and I have the colors picked out that I think that I'm going to need and start on one end and concentrate on the color and the pattern. Match your color, match your pattern. And if you can't quite get that color matched up, just take your color up into the paper a little bit and that kind of fools the eye. Looking pretty good, but disaster's coming shortly. This piece is going to need hand painting all the way to the edges and about two inches down at the top and the bottom to cover 
that back panel. So let's sit back and watch it unfold. Looking mighty fine, I must say. But like I said, disaster's coming. The back panel, I decided to paint yellow. Big mistake. That's going to change. Once it was painted, I needed to get this on the back of this cabinet without splitting that wood, especially since I had all of the decoupage paper on there nicely. So carefully, I did put that back on and it worked out great. Polycrylic, I need to get this on and this is where disaster happens. I always have this happen to me, so I'm changing my way of doing this. Um, I can heat set it, let it dry for days, and when I pull that polycrylic over, my paint will lift. The new way that I am going to do this is I am going to spray it with some polycrylic spray before I take a brush or a sponge and put the final coats on. I'm getting ready to do the final step on the outside and the cabinet bottom. So I'm going to sand it one more time with some 220 grit sandpaper. Now the drawer. You know when you have old pieces and you start to mess with them, they always fall apart. So I had to re-glue this. And while I was doing that, I went ahead and flipped that bottom. So the nicer portion would be showing when you opened up the drawer. Then once I did get it all squared up, I went ahead and clamped it. And then I am ready to take that staple gun again and carefully staple this without going through the sides. Oh, I made it and it looks pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. So you can see at that top area that um, gray that's that bondo and I need to put a piece of wood on top of there to make that other rail I have a piece that I cut perfectly to fit in there and I had to make it just so long because part of that rail is still there on the back but by the time I did get done with it this drawer fits wonderful and it moves smoothly and it's just great it works great I wanted to put some um, accents on the front and there's the back oh all right I had to repaint it so I used muscadine wine from Dixie Bell in a chalk paint and I liked it a lot better I put decoupage paper on the bottom of the shelf and also on the drawer that you can see by my knee it all works great except when you have to butt that paper up to a strip of something painted because that excess glue when you go to rip that paper off this is what you get plus I also had to match that paper up right there uh, because it wasn't quite long enough uh, my back is ready, so I want to get my polycrylic on there before I move on for protection um, because I just like to get the things protected uh, before I move on with other portions of the project. So there was three coats put on. Now here's the drawer. I wanted something special. Oh, look at who smeared their paint with their polycrylic. Got to wipe it off. This time around, after I stenciled it, and it was dry, I sprayed it with some polycrylic before I wiped polycrylic on. So here is my drawer. It's looking good. I like the stencil on the side. The rail is working great. 
no problems with it. So it's time to do something with this dried out inside. And also you can see the front where I repaired it. Can you see where I repaired it? Howard's Feed and Wax. I'm giving this drawer a nice coat of this and letting it soak in. Now the rest of the wood on this little cabinet is going to get Odie's oil. And I'm going to rub that in nice and slow, let that dry for a day, and then I am going to apply some Odie's wax and buff it. Oh, there's that sad little cabinet. She may be little, but she is going to be mighty. I really love this piece and it was kind of odd that the stenciling I put on the handle looked like an F and my father's name was Floyd. So thanks for watching, like and subscribe and I will catch you on the next one next Sunday at 7.